I think it is a war novel. Uh, obviously, there are parts of the book that are explicitly about war, about men and guns and fighting. But my experience of war is that it's not simply something that takes place over there with a military, which is how Americans think of war. My thinking of war is that it encompasses so many other people, civilians, refugees. Uh, war takes place in, in people's homes. And people who come to the United States as immigrants and refugees, their stories are seen as immigrant and refugee stories here in the U.S. But for many of them, those experiences are war stories. They came here to the U.S. because of wars that were fought in their homeland, oftentimes wars that the United States had a, a hand in. And so I hope that this novel is seen as a war novel, not simply because it deals with combat and soldiers, but because it deals with why it is that certain kinds of refugee populations are here in the U.S. and the tragedies that they brought with them. Well, I was born in Vietnam, and when the war ended in April of 1975, my parents had to make a very dramatic escape by boat from Vietnam. And we came to uh, the United States by way of Guam and settled down initially in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, because the Vietnamese refugees were put into one of four military camps, and one of those camps was in Pennsylvania. And we stayed there until about 1978 or 1979 before we moved to San Jose, California for better climate and economic opportunities. Well, growing up in the United States, I certainly felt that I was an American because I was raised in American culture, but I also felt that I was not an American, partially because of the way that my parents were raising me with Vietnamese culture and Vietnamese language and living in a heavily Vietnamese community in San Jose, and also through contradictions that I was experiencing in American culture, specifically around the way that Vietnam meant something for Americans, which was primarily as a war. So in the 1980s, I was reading a lot of American books about the war and watching American movies about the war and identifying with the American perspective, especially American soldiers. But there was always a disjuncture when the Vietnamese would appear on the pages or on the screen and American soldiers would kill them or rape them or abuse them or call them names. And I would start to think, am I the American here or am I the Vietnamese person? And that was really the beginning of a kind of political consciousness that would eventually lead, decades later, to me writing this novel. I wrote this book for myself because I felt that there were so many things that I wanted to say that I knew other people were thinking about, but which really hadn't made its way, made their way into American literature. But at the same time, what I was worried about was that if I was to give expression to the passion and the rage that I was feeling, perhaps not everyone would want to follow that kind of a story. So that was one key re reason for including humor and black comedy in this book. But at the same time, I was also aware that by including those elements, I might be alienating other readers as well. So these weren't really hurdles, but they were worries that I had about whether this book would speak to anybody else besides me. When I was thinking about these things in my youth, I didn't find them to be funny. But I think the passage of time has allowed a little bit of distance, allowed me to see that what was happening historically in Vietnam and with the American role in it and with what happened to the Vietnamese refugees who came to the United States were in many ways absurd. There were so many contradictions and hypocrisies and bad decisions and poor behavior, which were tragic, but which were also comic as well, if you could think of those things in that fashion. And by using humor, I didn't want to make light of these situations, but I wanted to point out that oftentimes humor, especially tragic comedy or black humor, are very effective ways to puncture the pomposity and the piety that accrues around those who have power and who abuse it. Well, there were several inspirations in terms of writing the novel when it came to dealing with issues of race or tragedy or comedy. And certainly African-American literature was really important to me because it is one of the, so the key sources that we have in American culture for a real passionate critique of central contradictions and problems in American society. Oftentimes it's done very seriously, but sometimes also in a comic vein as well. And I certainly was thinking in addition of the rich tradition of satirical literature around war uh, from Celine's Journey to the End of the Night to uh, Joseph Heller's Catch-22, uh, Ralph Ellison's Invisible Man it also has elements of the tragic, the comic, and the absurd as well. And it was this 
uh, diversity, this textured approach to the problem of history and tragedy that I really wanted to infuse into my own work.